Paul, great to see you. Tom, thanks for, for, for joining us. You, in first, uh, first area we want to hit on, you, you've been analysing the likely uh, impact of seasonality going forward in, in the short and medium term. What's uh, your conclusion? Oh, well, season, seasonality is working. Sell in May and go away is uh, the dominant theme that everybody's already heard, and, uh, but it's still going to work this year, uh, as evidenced by the fact that it's working great up until now. Uh, we are in a corrective period as part of that, leading to a low that the ideal annual seasonal pattern says is due in late June. Uh, and it's from that low in late June that we get the big rally up into July. Uh, thanks for reproducing the chart. That looks good. Uh, um, so we, we, it's a great time to buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high, repeat uh, almost daily between now and late June. But it's different, interestingly, in the first year of a, president, of a new presidential term. And that's what is shown in the chart I sent you of the presidential cycle pattern. It, it does the same sort of math as the annual seasonal pattern. We're averaging together multiple terms, but here we're only looking at first year's of a presidential term as opposed to all years. And this pattern says that it's more like mid-June and then uh, the rebound off of that goes way higher. Uh, it, it, we'd say sell in July in the first year of a presidential term and go away, but that doesn't, it's just not as catchy and rhyming as sell in May and go Where's away. The but hair that's on fire? The that's hair on fire is coming out of that mid-June bottom, uh, what, at which point I'm hoping that everyone who comes on your air will be speaking fearfully and the market's never going to go up again and the Fed's lost traction and the sky is falling and we're all going to die. If we can get everybody muttering to themselves about mid-June like that, then we can get a great strong rally to that July top. Well, we will see, we will see uh, what people are saying in, in a couple of weeks' time, Tom. In the meantime, well, what's your take on, on gold at the moment, which has uh, had a decent tick up in the last month or so, but perhaps not, not performed as well as it could have done? Gold's having a great uptrend uh, lately. Um, but interestingly, in the bigger picture, it is, it is not matching uh, something that it's, one of its fellow travelers is doing. Uh, the, the chart shows the share price of TIP, T-I-P, which is the iShares Treasury Inflation Protected Securities ETF. And most of the time, Gold and tip do exactly the same thing. They do it to different magnitudes, but their dance steps are, are like Fred and Ginger. They're running right together. It's when they do something different from each other that it gets interesting. And what we're seeing now is gold is, is rallying momentarily, but it's still in a pattern of lower highs and lower lows uh, from a longer term perspective ever since the August 2020 top. And But tip is making higher highs. And when we have seen that before, it's not been very often that's been bad news for both of them. It says that uh, the people who trade tip and, and the tips generally are overestimating inflation more so than what gold is saying. Now, the problem this year may be that part of what's driving up the tips generally as a class is the Fed is acting as a buyer of uh, treasuries generally and, and tips included in that. So the Fed may be ruining its own inflation measure uh, by, by skewing it. We don't know yet, but it's, it's not a good sign for gold that it's failing to keep pace with that. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.